Hello everyone. So today we will be learning about in radius, x radius, and how to apply these two ideas to solve problems. So this particular problem will be from AMC 10. AMC is the American Mathematics Competition. It's the first level of Maths Olympiad in the United States. So what is in radius and what is x radius and how can we compute the values of them given the side lengths and the other specifications of a triangle. So let's try start with the triangle ABC. So ABC be any triangle could be scalene triangle and we draw the angle bisectors of angle A, angle B and angle C. The bisectors of these three angles. Now it's a theorem that all of these angle bisectors they meet at a single point. So the angle bisectors are concurrent. So how can you prove this? There is a variety of ways. Uh, why don't you try to show this using the Shiva's theorem and put a proof in the description as a comment. That could be your homework. If you are following this channel you know that I often give problems to kids and ask them to put it in the comment section. Okay, so we have this um, intersection point of the angle bisectors and this point is known as in center or I. It's often represented by the letter I. And we can show that it is possible to draw perpendiculars from the point I. It's possible to draw perpendiculars from the point I and draw a circle like this. And all of these length of the perpendiculars are equal. So we can draw a circle centered at I with this particular radius R. Okay. So how can we show that all of these perpendicular lengths are equal? It's quite simple actually. If you look at these two triangles and try to prove them to be congruent, then you can prove that these two R's are equal. So how do we do that? Suppose this is D, this is E, this is F. Then in the triangle, let me use a different B, I, E and B, I, D in these two triangles. We want to show that they are congruent. How do we show it? Well, these two angles are equal because that's an angle bisector. So angle EBI is equals to angle DBI. So these two angles are equal. BI is equals to BI because it's a common side. And certainly these two angles are equal because this is a right angle. So angle BEI is equal to angle BDI. So it's ASA congruency. So the triangles are congruent. So you can show that IE is equal to ID. So similarly, you can show that IE is equals to IF using the triangles AEI and AFI. Okay. So you can also prove the proof of that in the comment. So show that, show that AEI is equals to a f I. how do you show that you can use the same exact same strategy that i used in the previous case for ie equals to id 
Okay, great. So we understand that all of these three things are equal. So we can use I as the center and draw a circle with this particular length as the radius. And we have a circle like this, which is known as the incircle of the triangle. It's known as the incircle. Similarly, and this particular R is known as the in radius. In radius. Similarly, we can draw the X circle and the X radius. So how do we do that? Well, let me go to a different portion of this picture. So we have this triangle again, ABC. But this time we extend the sides AB and AC. And we draw the external bisectors, these two bisectors, and one of the internal bisectors. Again, it's possible to show that all of these three lines are concurrent. So we can show that if this is I1, suppose we, want, we can show that AI1, BI1, and CI1 all the angle bisectors, one internal angle bisector and two external angle bisectors, they are concurrent that they meet at the same point. Then what we can do is we can drop perpendiculars from I1 like this to the three sides. Of course, two of them will be extended. So extended side AB, extended side AC and on BC we drop perpendiculars. We can again show that this yeah, blue lines, this, this, this three segments, they are all equal in length. So we can draw a circle like this with I1 as the center and this blue segment as the radius. So this segment is known as the X radius, one of the X radius, of course, you can do this on the side AC, you can do this on the side AB, that's possible. You have to extend BC and BA, CA to do it here. You have to extend CA and BA to do it here, but it's possible. So there are three types of x ray dye. This one is R1, suppose. And this is the X circle, one of the X circles. How do you show that these three blue segments are equal? Well, it's quite simple actually. Again, you take these two triangles and try to show that they are congruent. Let's try that one more time. So this is D, this is E, this is F, suppose. Then if I want to show that I1 DB is congruent to I1 EB, how do we show that? Well, again, this side is common these two angles are equal because they are 90 degrees and these two angles are equal okay because this is an angle bisector external angle bisector so these two angles are equal these two are equal because they are 90 and this side is common so it's uh, angle side angle congruency and we are done so all the x red eyes are equal great so we have these two information about in radius and x radius what we would like to do is find the values of in radius and x radius using the information of the side lengths of the triangle. So I'll do it for the in radius first. What we do is we want to find out the length of r, small r, is what? That's the goal. What is the length of this thing? So we first compute the area of triangle IBC. So area of triangle IBC is half R, that's the height because it's perpendicular, times BC. Half R times BC. Similarly, area of triangle IAB, IAB, is half R times AB. I AB is half R times AB. Half R times AB and triangle I 
AC is half R times AC. Okay, so we have these three triangles. Notice all of these three triangles are added up to give the area of the entire triangle. So triangle ABC's area, which I can represent by delta, is IAB plus IAC plus IBC, the area of these three triangles, which is coming out to be half R, if I take common, then AB, AC, BC. So AB plus AC plus BC. Now this is the perimeter of the triangle. This is the perimeter of the big triangle. So half times the perimeter is the semi-perimeter. So we represent it by S, which is half times perimeter. So that's the semi-perimeter. So the area of the triangle ABC delta is he equal to R times S. This is the formula that we are after. That the area of the triangle ABC, the entire triangle, is equal to the length of the in radius times the semi-perimeter of the triangle. It's a very useful formula and we will be using it all the time. Can you use a very similar strategy to find a formula for the x radius? So R1, that's the x radius. R1 is equals to delta over S minus A. Uh, here A is the length of BC. It's the side opposite to the vertex A. So the semi-perimeter minus the side opposite to the vertex A. You can also look at here. Semi-perimeter minus the side opposite to the vertex A. Divide the area of the triangle by that quantity and you will get the first x radius. Okay, so this is great. Uh, we understand this, I hope. And in the next video, we will be using this to solve a problem uh, from the American Mathematical Competition, which is an application of in radius and x radius. So it involves, uh, maybe you can use a different slide. So here is the problem. There is a hexagon like this, a regular hexagon. There's a regular hexagon. And there is a circle which is like this, which is tangent to the side AB, C, D, E, F, suppose. And there is another regular hexagon, another there is another circle which is tangent to this side. Like this. So extended FA, extended BC and ED. What we want to do is to find the ratio of these two circles. Ratio of the areas of these two circles. It's a fantastic problem. And you can try this, put a comment in the description and uh, tell me what the ratio could be. You have to use in radius and x radius. Uh, give it a try. Okay. I'll see you in the next video and we'll do some more brilliant mathematics. Bye.